How's it going everyone, Rosalind here. Today I want to go over everything that you need to know about the HD remaster of Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. For those of you who are new to the channel, I speak Japanese and often pick up games before their western releases and play those and translate them on my Twitch channel as we play through them. Because of this, I had the opportunity to play through the HD remaster in its entirety last year, which is why I'm now able to tell you more about it. Now with this video, I do hope to provide a little bit of something for everyone, with information that will not only be helpful to fans of the original, but also for those who may be coming over from the Persona series. And as always, if you have any questions about this video, SMT3 Nocturne, or any other game that I cover, feel free to hit me up over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash rosalindgaming, or over on my Discord server, both of which are linked in the video description. First and foremost, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster is just that, a remaster. The main reason I bring this up, despite it being fairly obvious, is because a common complaint when the Japanese version released is that it felt like a remaster and not a remake. I believe those who were upset went into the game expecting a full-blown remake even though that was never really what the game was supposed to be. That being said, as an HD remaster, a number of things have been improved upon. For starters, the overall visuals have been upgraded to HD quality, and the aspect ratio has been changed from 4x3 to 16x9. Additionally, the entirety of the game's main story is now fully voiced, with both Japanese and English options available for the Western release. And to go along with this, the game has been retranslated to accommodate the inclusion of voice acting. An unfortunate side effect of this, however, is that some of the more humorous interactions from the original game are likely going to be censored. But personal opinions aside, I'm sure this will be a small price to pay for improved visuals and voice acting. Sadly though, not all aspects of the game's visuals and audio presentation were upgraded for this HD remaster. For example, all cinematic cutscenes reuse the original game's movie files, meaning they revert back to a 4x3 aspect ratio for their duration, alongside a noticeable drop in audio quality. This drop in audio quality also extends to the game's battles, where sound effects and battle music use the original game's audio files as well. Now I can't tell you if this is also the case outside of battle, as I haven't played enough of the original to compare, but the degradation in quality inside battles and the cinematic cutscenes is very noticeable. This is quite unfortunate, but one place where a degradation in quality is something you don't need to worry about is with the sponsor of today's video, Boksu. One of the things that I always looked forward to most while I was living in Japan was being able to experience all of the great seasonal and regional snacks that the country has to offer. Thankfully, Boksu is here to help those of us who aren't in Japan, but still want to experience Japan's gourmet delicacies. They provide a gourmet experience with an assortment of hand-picked Japanese snacks and tea pairings right to your front door. And in order to make this possible, Boksu works with traditional Japanese factories, some of which have been around for over 100 years. As soon as you open your box, you're greeted to a nice thank you letter and a high-quality booklet that showcases each of the snacks in your box, alongside other information such as those behind the products and where in Japan each snack is from. The box itself is filled with 10 to 20 snacks, depending on the package you choose, which, as stated before, are hand-picked from all over Japan to deliver you that great taste from throughout the country. Being a fan of mochi and sweets made from azuki beans, I was especially happy to find mochan dango mochi and Hokkaido red bean donuts in my box. So if you want to indulge in some gourmet Japanese snacks and support the channel at the same time, be sure to use the link in the description and head over to Boks' website and get 10% off your authentic Japanese snack box and save up to $47 when you use code ROSALIND10. Thanks to Boksu for supporting the channel. Moving on, I want to talk about the changes and additions that don't pertain to the HD remaster's graphics and audio, starting with what is, at least in my opinion, the best change. No more randomized skill inheritance. That's right, no more do you have to worry about spending hours fighting RNG for the exact abilities that you want to pass down to a new fusion to be selected, only to have a fusion accident ruin it all for you. This is actually a change that I didn't get to experience with my playthrough of the HD remaster, as it was added in a patch a few weeks after I completed the game, so I must admit I am a little bit envious. Two other changes include the addition of a new, easier difficulty in Merciful, as well as the ability to change the game's difficulty at any time from the options menu. This new difficulty substantially increases the amount of experience and money earned from battles, and it also increases the amount of damage you deal to enemies, as well as lowering the amount of damage you receive. Additionally, it also lowers the encounter rates and the enemy stats. Simply put, the new Merciful difficulty makes the game a complete and utter joke with absolutely no challenge whatsoever. Outside of using this difficulty to grind for money and experience whenever you're fusing demons, if you opt not to pick up the other DLC, I personally feel no one should ever use this difficulty setting. But speaking of other DLC, the HD remaster of Nocturne does include some paid DLC. 
First is the aforementioned DLC aimed at making the acquisition of experience and money easier. This DLC gives you access to two mini dungeons, one that is specifically for grinding experience quickly and the other for money. In the over 90 hours that I played to get the true demon ending, money was never once an issue for me, so if you do decide to pick up this DLC, I would only look at the one for experience as it actually is faster than putting the game in merciful mode and grinding that way. Moving on, music tracks from SMT 1, 2, 4, and 4 Apocalypse have also been added as DLC, but perhaps the biggest and most controversial piece of DLC is that of Dante from Devil May Cry. Originally included in the PS2 Western release of Nocturne, Dante is now available as paid DLC, with his original place in the game being replaced with Raido from the Devil Summoner series. Functionally, they are identical, as Dante was given the Pierce ability to bring him in line with Raido's power level, making the choice of whether or not to shell out for the DLC an entirely aesthetic one. The last addition I want to mention before we move on is the addition of a suspend save option. Unlike normal saves, which must be done at one of the mini terminals throughout the game, this new suspend save can be done at any time. However, it is a temporary save file. Upon saving this way, the game will put you back at the start screen, and should you reload, that save file will be deleted. Essentially, this feature allows the player to quit the game at any time and then resume from that location without fear of losing progress. Now that we've covered the differences between the HD remaster and the original version of Nocturne, I want to dedicate a section of the video to those that may be jumping into SMT for the first time due to the recent popularity of the Persona series. First and foremost, SMT titles, and especially Nocturne, tend to be heavily focused on exploration and combat. That's not to say that there isn't any story, there certainly is, but unlike with Persona titles, the story does take a bit of a backseat to the gameplay. Speaking of story though, SMT games tend to have multiple endings, and Nocturne is no exception to this. Throughout the course of the game, the player will interact with a number of key figures, and based on your interactions with these characters, the ending you get will differ. There are also other factors that can drastically change the ending you get, but I'll refrain from talking about the endings to avoid spoilers for those who haven't played the original. Finally, I want to touch on character growth and your party. Unlike with the Persona series, you don't have a bunch of party members that follow you throughout the game and fight alongside you in battle. Instead, you summon demons who serve as your party members. Think of it as if Joker's Persona were his actual party members in Persona 5. How you actually acquire these demons, though, is basically the same, with your primary options being to recruit them through negotiations or through fusion. And while the fusion process is also largely the same as it is in the Persona series, there are a few key differences in Nocturne. For one, this game has a moon cycle, and this moon cycle can dictate whether or not it is even possible to fuse certain demons. And then there are also some demons that require the player to have a specific item in their inventory. And that brings us to character growth. Unlike the Persona titles in which character growth was dictated by the Persona equipped, Nocturne is quite different. Each time you level up, you'll be given skill points with which you can distribute amongst the main character stats. As for skills, these are learned from an equipable item known as Magatama. The game contains many different Magatama, and each one can teach the player different skills upon leveling up. Additionally, these Magatama can augment the player's base stats and resistances while equipped, though they can't be changed in battle. Because of the way these systems work, there is a level of permanence that is not present in the Persona series, making your choices as a player that much more important. And that'll do it for this video covering everything you need to know about Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster. If you found the video helpful, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And again, if you have any questions about this video, Nocturne, or any other game that I cover, you can always catch me live over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash rosalindgaming, or on my Discord server, both of which are linked in the video description. Until next time, take care.